this is a video about how I checked my horn circuit on my 74 T150V. However, I've included information about how to check the same circuit on the 750 Twins because they are so similar, using the same Lucas wire colours, horn and horn switch. Uh, so the triples have um, two horns uh, and they, these are activated by a push button similar as on the T140s but instead of a direct feed they uh, are activated via a relay and um, so it's slightly more complicated. The twins are simpler than the triples in that they only have one horn and there is no relay. The white cable from the ignition switch provides current to the switch cluster uh, uh, containing a push button switch that controls the current direct to the horn. If you want to upgrade a twin by adding another horn then you will need to fit a relay to because the switch will probably not be able to deal with the increased current load. There's two horns on here and as you can hear only one of them is is working. Um, so we're going to investigate what the issue is there. And so I suspect that the horns could do with a bit of internal investigation and uh, the circuit needs checking. Um, the circuit consists of a uh, horn button which activates this relay here old-fashioned relay it works just in exactly the same way as a modern relay um, and um, so we're going to test that as uh, check that um, uh, as part of the procedure so looking at the wiring diagram you can see here we've got the horn relay <coughs> and uh, this is an old lucas type uh, relay so it doesn't have modern um, uh, terminal markings on it but we can see that um, the uh, white lead mark W is attached to terminal C1 the red lead which is earth is attached to terminal W2 the black leads are marked attached to terminal C2 they go to the horns and attached to terminal W1 is a purple and black lead which comes from the horn push so um, that those those are the four connections um, so the, the white lead going to C1 will be the supply coming from uh, the battery um, uh, to the um, relay and once the relay is operated that's bridged inside and connects C1 to C2 and the horns go off um, and uh, that connection is made to happen by pushing the horn button so when we push the horn button, just to make this clearer, just to, when we push the horn button, um, that goes from W1 to W2, which is the red connection, and that activates the electromagnetic relay inside the device. And uh, C1 and C2 are bridged. Right, I'm just going to start testing the uh, relay to make sure that it's okay. First thing I'm going to do is test the signal coming down from the um, from the horn button. So when I push the horn button, this terminal should become live. If I push the horn button, you can see that we've got a live at at that terminal so that indicates that there's a good supply there uh, next one I'm going to check is uh, terminal 
uh, C1, which is the uh, live feed. So we don't need to push any buttons or anything for that. All we need to do is to touch the um, voltmeter on the on the um, terminal, and you can see that I've got a good supply there. Uh, and then lastly, if I connect the uh, probe to terminal C2, which is the supply to the horns, when I push the horn button, that should give us a signal, which it is. You can also, uh, hopefully, hear the relay um, clicking. Um, so, okay, so for that, that last test, I, I had the horn button, um, uh, sorry, the um, hooter terminals disconnected from the relay. Uh, you can see it down here because I didn't want to deafen myself in the garage. So there we are. So I've um, drilled out all the rivets and of course forgot to film it, but um, it's just a simple straightforward job of uh, centre punching the rivets and drilling them out. Um, and uh, so there we are. That's what we've got inside. I've not disturbed anything. The um, the points. So these points here. This is a this is an, an armature here, and this is uh, some coils with a set of points, and um, the horn operates by. Uh, when you push the button, these this, these coils become magnets that attract attract the armature to towards the uh, the coils because they're magnetic. And this post here pushes on the um, on the points part, and then that breaks the circuit, and the uh, diaphragm that the armature is attached to springs back, and uh, so that all happens very quickly in succession. So the trouble I was having um, is because these points here look pretty dirty to me. You can't see it terribly well on the camera I don't suppose. But uh, yeah, well the whole thing's pretty dirty inside isn't it? So I'm going to give that a clean up and um, uh, have a look at this diaphragm so we can get that off. So, just put that there. There we go. So, uh, yeah, give that give that diaphragm a bit of a clean up, and um, see if we can make it look a bit better. All right, so I'll just clean that up. The horns used on both models are the same in operation. They consist of twin electromagnets, the circuit of which is interrupted by a contact breaker switch. Normally the contacts are closed. When the circuit is energised, the magnets pull on the armature attached to the diaphragm and open the CB points, breaking the circuit. The magnetic field collapses. The contacts reconnect when the diaphragm springs back to rest and the cycle is repeated. The result is that a sound is emitted from the device. So I've cleaned up the contacts with a bit of um, uh, wet and dry paper and I've also used some uh, switch contact cleaner on, uh, on it. Uh, so I'm hoping that will improve things a bit. I've cleaned up the gasket surfaces and I've also cleaned up the diaphragm so I'm going to put a bit of smear of silicon instant gasket on the surfaces now and uh, reassemble it. 
The tone of the horn can be adjusted to tune it to get the best, loudest sound. A screw on the back of the horn can be turned. Doing this changes the contact breaker gap and this affects the sound emitted. Sometimes moving the screw either or both ways can get a non-working horn to work, but usually this is a short-lived solution.